Welcome back Technocrats. I'm your host Dean McClarty and with me is another one of the lovely finalists in the Queen of Tech competition, Kamika. And we're here to teach you technology. Don't press any buttons, we'll be right back. Welcome to Computer Alley. This is where we teach you about computers and computing. Today, we're going to unleash the digital strap of parental controls. Recently, it came to light that a 14-month-old child used her father's iPhone to purchase a old broken down car on eBay for $225. So that now brings us to today's topic, to today's topic, which is parental controls. So what exactly is parental control? Okay. Parental control are options built into electronic services and products which allow a parent to determine what the child can and cannot do on that device or service. Now we're going to explore setting up parental control on Windows. And in my hand here, I have a tablet that has Windows 8 on it. So we're going to run you through the process of setting up this on a Windows 8 tablet. So in order to do this, we're going to go Start, Settings, Control Panel, and then we go to User Accounts. Then we're going to go to Family and Safety. And then we're going to select the account that we want to make the changes to. Now that we're in the setting options for the parental controls, what we have is basically four set of window settings that you can choose from. Um, these settings include web filtering, time limits, Windows Store and game con um, restrictions, as well as application restrictions. What are application restrictions? Okay, well, application restrictions will limit the kind of applications that your child can use. So as an adult, you would have multiple apps or programs on your machine. Now, not all those applications are applications that your child should have access to. So for example, you might have a streaming application like say Netflix, and Netflix might be able to access a myriad of movies which are not age appropriate for your child. So what you can do, you can say, she is not allowed or he is not allowed to use Netflix. There's also things like um, time limits, which are actually very important. So Dean, how exactly does the time limit function work? All right. Um, we ha you have a child, right? They are allowed to watch TV or they are allowed to use the internet between a certain period and a certain period. But one of the, the, the tricks that a child uses is to say that, well, I have homework on the PC. And when they go on the PC, instead of just doing homework, typing up the document, they are there doing Facebook and YouTube. So what you can do is one of the restrictions you can set is that the internet is only available between this time and this time. So even if the child is on the PC, they still cannot use the internet. So they are basically being forced to do what they're there to do. And that also translates into them into when you do web filtering, because the web filtering now allows you to limit or determine which sites your child can view. You can say that my child is not allowed to view YouTube any at all. Or you can say that my child is only allowed to view these contents on YouTube. Or you can say that they're only allowed to view YouTube between these specific hours. The parental control allow you, allows you to be a parent even when you're not there. So what it does is whatever restrictions you would apply to your child using these devices and services while you're there, the options and the settings allow you to implement those so that even when you're not there, as long as the child is trying to use those devices or services, those restrictions or those guidelines are still there in place. Gaming is a big issue and a lot of children have games to play games on the computers. Again, the gaming restrictions will allow you to say, because every game has a, has a rating. So you have E for everyone, you have T for teen, you have R for? Adult-ish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Adult-ish, and that was coined by me, adult-ish. 
Well, I can't even explain that. So we we'll just yeah. leave it alone. Well, it is designed for young adults, basically. Right. So R would mean that it is designed for young adults, but really and truly, most of these games are actually played by teens. So a lot of the R-rated games are actually being played by teens. So as a parent, you might say, okay, I am going to block or stop my child from playing games that are not rated as age appropriate. Now, once you have gone through and selected the options or the restrictions that you want to implement or impose, all it requires now is a matter of pressing that button. Thank you. And, of course, it is applied. Now, you can leave and go and feel free and confident in the fact that your child is under the same set of scrutiny as if you were physically at home with them while they're using the computer. So Dean, we did this on a Windows 8, so is the process for Windows 7 any different or is it the same? Um, there's a slight difference. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we have time. What we'll do is just run through a Windows 7 setup just so you can see the difference if you're using a Windows 7 OS as opposed to a Windows 8. <laughs> Let's get social. Do you think that parental control on your device is a benefit or a hindrance to your child's learning and development? Take the discussion to Facebook and Twitter at Total Technocrat. Coming up next, Dean explores the Lenovo tablet. Hi Jamaica, my name is Thea. I would like to be your queen of tech. Technology is my passion. I'm a creative technocrat who loves technology. Choose me as the co-host. I will add passion and flair that's needed for the show. Text 83246 to 444-4252. Thanks Jamaica. Hi Jamaica, my name is Jamila. I want to be your queen of tech. I'm a creative technocrat who loves technology. Choose me as the co-host. I will add passion and flair that's needed for the show. Text 83244 to 444-4252. Thanks, Jamaica.
Hi Jamaica, my name is Shanika Allen. I would like to be your queen of tech. Technology is my passion. I am a creative technocrat who loves technology. Choose me as the co-host and I will add passion and flair that is needed for the show. Text A3243 to triple four four two five two. Thank you Jamaica and see you soon. Back on the go and today in my hand I have the Lenovo ThinkPad tablet 2. Now this is a brand new tablet from Lenovo and to be honest it does pack a good wallop. So let's run through the specs and the features on this tablet. First of all it's using an Intel Atom processor and it comes in at dual core 1.8 gigahertz. It has 2 giga RAM right it has a 64 gig internal storage it also has the ability to expand the storage to with an additional 64 gig card to 128. Uh, it has front, uh, rear and front cameras. Now, the front camera is 2 megapixels, the rear camera is 8 megapixels. So that means you can record in HD from both cameras. Right? Rear camera, front camera. Other things you will notice is that uh, it comes with something that I really like, which is a full-size USB port. So what I can do with this, and this is what I find lacking in many tablets, is I can stick my thumb drive, if I can get it in the hole, I can stick my thumb drive in there and immediately have access to all the information that is on my, on my thumb drive. So I don't need to go and connect to a PC, I don't need to Bluetooth, I don't need to connect to a wireless to transfer information. If, if a friend comes to me and wants something from it, as simple as me, sticking my thumb drive in, transferring the information, handing it over to him. That I really like. In addition to that, it comes with the HDMI port here, and this is a mini HDMI. Mini HDMI port to regular HDMI, so you can connect it to your uh, multimedia device, like your flat screen television or a projector. It has a docking connector, because there's additional dock that you can purchase. Additionally, it supports a SIM card. So you can put in a SIM card for 3G. Of course, it has Wi-Fi. Bluetooth and then also the slot for the the memory card is also right there as well Of course, it comes standard with your regular 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks and it has three buttons here Now two are volume up and volume down and the third is a lock button for the screen So if you don't want the screen to rotate you can lock it so that it doesn't rotate from the position you have left it It is very light Very very light very thin which I really really like and it is, it is sleek, it is, it, is, it is a very nice design, in my opinion, I really do like it. And the fact that it has the, the stylus, there's a stylus that you can, you can add, to the, add to it and use with the device, works out good for me. You can get up to 10 hours of streaming, of HD content, you can also do gaming, because the graphics on it is excellent. The other good thing about this tablet is that the, the screen, the screen is actually excellent. It's a 10.1 inch screen, IPS technology, five finger touch screen. So, all of those resizing from the screen, it looks, see, I just did that. Then we're back. All of the, um, the responsiveness, all of the things you have grown accustomed to with the screens, it's all there. It's actually quite good. Now we're going to take a look at the operating system that it is running. Now, it comes with two flavors. You can get Windows 8 um, 32-bit or Windows 8 32-bit Professional Edition. And with that, it means that your regular Office applications and productivity applications you are able to run on this so this is not running a surface rt os this is running full-fledged windows 8 which is excellent so really and truly this tablet would be for a business individual so for the business persons who want to be able to crunch your excel numbers you want to be able to look at those spreadsheets you want to be able to do everything you pretty much would do on your laptop however you want something thin and light to run around and then you also want to be able to to on the occasion watch your movies and those kind of things then this might be an option for you the other interesting thing is that the fact that it has the usb port here it also means and it's running the full version of windows it means that you can plug in your printer or a printer and as you know with windows 8 it will go online find the drivers install it and you're able to print just like that
Let's get social. Do you think that teachers and administrators are ready for the implementation of tablet PCs in schools? Take the discussion to Facebook and Twitter at Total Technocrat. After the break, Dean gets vertical with wind turbines. So my name is Kamiko. I would like to be your queen in tech. Technology is my passion. I'm a creative technocrat who loves technology. Choose me as the co-host. I'll add passion and flair that's needed for the show. Text A3242 to triple four four two five two. Thanks, Jamaica. Hi Jamaica, my name is Kimberly. I would like to be your queen of tech as I have a passion for technology. I'm a creative technocrat who loves technology. Choose me as your co-host, I will add passion and fear that's needed for the show. Vote for me, text 83241 to 444252. Thanks Jamaica. I'm Kimon Rose. I would like to be your queen of tech. Technology is my passion. I'm a creative technocrat who loves technology. Choose me as a co-host. I will add passion and flair that's needed for the show. To vote for me, text A3245 to 444-4252. Thanks, Jamaica. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you know it's time for It Mad. Today, our project comes from the local newspaper. So, the government roughly spends $2.3 billion per year to pay for streetlights. Now, recently, they were looking at a, a method to light the corridor from Lilliput into Montego Bay, which is a new stretch of highway, pretty nice road. And they were looking at a, a cost-effective measure to light that portion of the street. Um, what they eventually settled on is using LED lights because they wanted to use solar but there were issues with the solar like theft of the batteries and the solar panels and, and that sort of thing. Uh, what I am going to do today is try and propose an alternative that the government or even our local public service or local light company, light and power company might want to look at. Now it is utilizing an, a technology that has existed for hundreds of years, wind turbines. Now, I know when I say wind turbines, everybody goes, okay, really? You want to put those big blades onto the, where exactly, how does that work? What we're talking about specifically is what we refer to as vertical axis turbines. And what it does is that traditionally your wind turbine looks kind of like the propeller of a plane. However, vertical axis turbines, they stand upright like I am standing now. So the blades rotate in this direction rather than this direction. What that, allo what that design allows is for less space. Now, the idea that I came across was to integrate one of these vertical rotating turbines into the light poles themselves. And what this will allow is that every time a vehicle drives past, it generates wind. The wind then drives that turbine. The turbine generates electricity. That electricity can be used to power the streetlights. And more than likely, it will generate enough electricity to, to not just power the lights, but to be able to sell back to the grid. There are turbines that can run on wind as low as four miles per hour. Think about it. 
four miles per hour and can sustain winds of up to 130 miles per hour. One of the questions persons will ask is, okay, uh, we live in a hurricane zone, a hurricane prone area. We have already had one tropical depression, so to speak. What happens when a storm comes? How will it affect the turbines that are out there on the road? Because it is impractical to go and dismantle all these turbines, especially since they're integrated inside or in the middle of the poles themselves. Well, the truth of the matter is there are turbines, vertical axis turbines, that can support up to a category four hurricane. That, that means it can take wind speeds of up to 130 miles per hour. That's a category four hurricane. So these turbines can withstand that kind of weather. The vertical axis turbines have an efficiency of roughly about 30%, between 30 and 50%. However, the benefit from the system is that you are now generating revenues and you are generating electricity from something that normally goes to waste. On our roads, the speed limit for the most part is 80 kilometers per hour, which is 50 miles an hour. Now you have cars driving on average, say 30 miles an hour. When you have turbines that require only four miles per hour winds to generate electricity. That means that pretty much at all times you'll be generating electricity regardless. And an additional benefit of the vertical axis turbines is that it can take winds from pretty much all directions. So let me list some of the benefits of implementing a vertical axis wind turbine system. One, they're always facing the wind. Because of how it is designed, they can take wind from any direction pretty much. They have a greater surface area, so they are better able to generate and capture more energy. They are more efficient in high gusts or in very strong winds than your traditional horizontal turbines. They can support winds of up to 130 miles an hour. They can be installed on buildings, on the ground. They have less requirement, less height requirement in terms of placement. They, because of the size and the design, they are more scalable. So what you could do is create a grid of vertical access uh, turbines to generate electricity. They generally have low maintenance and downtime. They produce less noise and they are more aesthetically pleasing. The vertical turbines are better able to blend with the existing environment to keep a uniform look and feel. Vertical axis turbines have been used to create a, a grid that is able to generate energy at 2.5 cents per kilowatt hour using an average wind speed of 15 miles per hour. Take into consideration that the government spends $2.3 billion annually to maintain and to produce, to pay the electricity bill associated with streetlights. If we're able to use this technology, the vertical axis turbines, integrate them into the light poles and generate electricity such that we can cut that bill by to say $1 billion annually. That is $1.3 billion the government is able to save which can be diverted to other areas such as education or healthcare. Let's get social. Do you think the government and the private sector should implement a pilot project to test the effectiveness of vertical access wind turbines on our highways? Take the conversation to Facebook and Twitter at Total Technocrat. Today we looked at parental controls, Lenovo tablet, and vertical access wind turbines. Thank you for watching. This has been Technocrats. But remember to keep it social and continue the conversation on Facebook and Twitter at Total Technocrat. And tune in this and every Thursday at 6 p.m. See you next week.